That's important because this resistor here, say, might be a light bulb. How would the light bulb behave? Let's go back to this picture. How would the light bulb have behaved in this picture? Well, originally, when there was no current, the light bulb was not glowing. Then when we closed the switch, it became very bright. And then over time, it would have gotten dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. How, how bright this is depends on the power. And the power is I squared R. So as the current fall, as the current across the resistor falls, the brightness would fall. That's actually a pretty common application of these types of problems on exams to say what happens to a light bulb in this situation. So the practical effect of this current falling here is that the light bulb would jump to a very bright brightness, and then over time it would get dimmer and dimmer until eventually it got to no brightness at all when the current stopped. And what's going to happen to this light bulb over here now? Well, again, when we close the switch, it's going to pop into maximum brightness. But then as, less, as fewer and fewer positive charges are around, there will be less and less current going through it until eventually it will get down to, to being not, uh, not lighted up at all. Now what we really care about is this capacitor graph. What's happening to the charge across the capacitor? Well, remember that we started with a fully charged capacitor. It got charged up in this picture. So at time zero, it's fully charged. Now what's going to happen to the amount of charge on the capacitor over time? It'll start to decrease. Right. But it can't just jump. It takes time for the charges to get out of here. So it can only decrease continually, continuously. Eventually, the charge is going to go to zero. Eventually, all the positive charges will be gone, at least in the, in the limit, asymptotically. But they can't just teleport away. It takes time for the charges to move. So what's going to happen to the voltage across the capacitor? It'll also decrease. Remember, that's a good answer. The voltage and the charge are proportional. The graph of the charge also tells you what's happening to the voltage. They won't be the same numerically, but they'll have the same picture. That's why I can put V and Q on the same graph here. So um, when there isn't a battery and the positive charges are moving counterclockwise, their whole goal is to come back to the bottom plate of the capacitor. And unite with the negative charges. So does that mean that like, within time, the, voltage, voltage, the capacitor will be restored? Restored to what? To, a sort of, like, to the original amount of charge and voltage? Oh, are you, um, well, it's going to be, right now, for example, right now there might be, say, positive 10 coulombs on the top plate and negative 10 coulombs on the bottom. Right. And at the end, the there will be zero coulombs on the top and zero coulombs on the bottom. I think what you might have been thinking is that we would go from positive 10 coulombs on the top to positive 10 coulombs on the bottom, but no, because... Remember that the positive charges are moving towards the negative plate. Well, what happens when you have a positive plus a negative? You don't get a positive, you get zero. Mm -hmm. Every time one of these positive charges meets up with a negative, they annihilate, so to speak, and you just have zero. So it's not like we're just going to reverse the order of the plates. That's why in this picture here, so the picture is not going to negative Q. It's going to zero. Eventually, there will be no charge separation at all. Right now, there's a large charge separation, and eventually there'll be no charge separation at all. We're never going to get, in this situation, positive, uh, a net positive charge on the bottom plate. All we're going to do is we're going to move the positive 10 coulombs from the top to the bottom. So what we're doing is we're taking the positive 10 coulombs up here and adding it to the negative 10 coulombs on the bottom. Well, if you add positive 10 coulombs and negative 10 coulombs, you get zero coulombs. And also, we're taking the positive 10 coulombs here and subtracting 10 coulombs, so that this plate will also be zero. So we're just going to go to zero here. So eventually, the whole thing is over. This is, not, this is not something that goes on forever. Again, the main lesson that we're getting here is the capacitor prevents jumps in voltage, because it prevents jumps in charge, and these are proportional to each other. But that means it has to allow a jump in current. It, if we work out the logic, the only way to prevent this from jumping is to allow the current to jump. If you think about it, we were asking, what was the purpose of a capacitor before? Well, we said the purpose is to store charge. Why would anyone want to store charge? Well, remember that it's like a dam. A dam stores water. Why would anyone want to store water as an energy source? You pile up water behind the dam, and then when you need the energy, you let some of the water out. And that, pot, that powers whatever electrical appliances that you have. Well, it's the same deal here. We piled up a whole bunch of charge on this capacitor, and then if we need some energy, we close the switch and let some of the charge out, and that powers this light bulb over here. So this is almost like, it's like making the capacitor into a little battery. You can see that the capacitor it was almost like acting like its own little battery. The capacitor maybe is not exactly like a battery, but it's kind of like a battery. This was like charging up the battery, and this is like using the battery. 
Well, we know that eventually the battery gets completely used up, and then you can't use it anymore unless you recharge it. So if we wanted to, at this point, we could go back to this picture and put another external battery in and charge this one up again. But until we charge up the capacitor, it's done for. This is very useful if you need a quick burst of energy, because these positive charges really get, try to spring out of here very quickly. For example, I believe that the uh, common example is the flashbulb in a camera. A flashbulb in a camera needs a very quick delivery of energy to get a very brief, short, sharp flash. So what the camera does is it uses its battery to store up a capacitor. And then when you need the flashbulb to go off, you briefly discharge the capacitor and the positive charges come pouring off in one great big fell swoop. So we should think of this as a very quick process. Generally speaking, we're going to lose all the charge very quickly. Even though the charge isn't jumping, it's going to be moving very quickly. So this is a way to get a very quick delivery of energy. Whereas a battery might be good for smooth delivery of energy. If you just want smooth delivery of constant stream of energy, a battery. But if you want a quick, brief, short, short shock of energy, that's what the capacitor is for. What would be the equation then for this graph? <coughs> Ah, what, what is our asymptotic equation, like this? Now, is the charge here asymptotically increasing or asymptotically decreasing? So it would be Q equals Q max E to the negative T over It wouldn't look like this, because these are the equations for asymptotic increase, and we need the equation for asymptotic decrease. How about the V equation? V equals V max E to negative T over C. And the current equation? Um, I equals I max E to negative T over C. Good. These all seem the same. But the graph I left out, I didn't put in the graph for the resistor. The resistor would have a graph that's the inverse of this, so it would have asymptotic increase, but at the same time, we won't go through that graph. But there's also a resistor graph over here. Notice that over here, we had these equations for a capacitor, and here we have these equations for the capacitor. People get confused, what's the right equation for a capacitor? Well, they're different because this was a charging capacitor, and this is a discharging capacitor. Well, it makes sense that when the capacitor is charging, you need the asymptotic increase equation for the charge. But when the capacitor is discharging, you need the asymptotic decrease equation for the charge. So you have to be very careful about using the right equation. You can't just say, this is the capacitor equation. It depends on whether it's charging or discharging. And remember, the equation for the capacitor might be very different from the equation for the resistor. So you always have to make, be very clear in your mind about who's changing and uh, who's not. Well, those are the basic ideas we need to understand for a capacitor. The key thing we saw with the capacitor is, who does the capacitor prevent jumps in? Voltage. Voltage and charge. Good. And we saw that the capacitor is a way of storing energy. Ah, so we need another equation. How much energy has the capacitor stored? I don't know if you remember seeing this equation. This is the equation for the potential energy that's stored in the capacitor. One half CV squared. Potential energy in a capacity is one half CV squared. Remember, this is like a dam that stores energy. Well, this tells us how much energy we've stored. Where did this energy come from? Well, ultimately, it came from the battery that charged it up. So, while we're charging the battery, while we're charging the capacitor, we're storing energy in it. 
and then we can allow it to discharge and use it as a battery. That's why I said earlier that a capacitor can be either a voltage source or a voltage drop. While it's being charged, this is the voltage drop that's dissipating the voltage from the battery. But now that the capacitor is acting like the battery, so to speak, this is the voltage source. 